Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. Today we're going to talk about the Analog Discovery 3 Kit. And this is a tool that you can use to test your equipment. It comes with the uh, testing tool that you see here. It's a small little piece of gear and uh, also comes with a BNC connector. And those two can plug basically together just like this. And then you can connect some probes. It comes with actually two uh, oscilloscope kind of style probes and you can connect to the board and you can test various pieces of gear with that. So what can we test with it? In this video we're going to test a vintage Marins 2270 amplifier, a Sensui 4900 also vintage. Also in this video we're going to be testing the Macintosh 275 amplifier this is a Mark V, so it's a semi-vintage machine. It's been around for a little while. And see what's all the hype about the Macintosh 275 and see how it actually tests. To test things, you're going to need software. And what makes this discovery kit very valuable by Digilant is it's actually the software that it comes with. The actual gear itself is not worth 379 US dollars, but the software that comes with it is and other third-party software that are available. The software that it comes with, it's called Waveform, and it's a very powerful software, and you can do a lot of things with it. The first one, and very powerful one, is you can use it as an oscilloscope. As a waveform generator, so it's going to be, you can generate basically sound waves with it to test your equipment. You can use it as a voltmeter, you can use it as a uh, spectrum analyzer, and that's very helpful for us audiophiles trying to test different noise on different things. Plus many other tests that are also available. It's very popular in schools and universities that they use it. So the software is it what makes this piece of equipment really powerful. And what makes it even more powerful is you can use different tools at the same time simultaneously. So for example, you can use a waveform generator to output a waveform, say at one kilohertz, then go into the spectrum analyzer and get the output from your testing device and analyze that waveform. And for third-party software, the one I would like to talk about today is the Audio Analyzer Suite. This is an amazing software and it's free. The Audio Analyzer Suite is provided by a fellow who has a YouTube channel it's called The Stuff Made. I'll put a link in, in the description below where you can download that software. But I just want to say a special thanks for providing such great software for us, the, the audio community. And I hope you keep updating the software uh, for a while. One thing when you download the software, it's very important to first download the waveform uh, software that comes with the analog discovery uh, kit because the audio analyzer suite will not work without downloading the waveform first. I will talk about the setup and why you need to build your own input output board after I review the three amplifiers. So stay tuned if you want to know how to set it up. First thing we're going to test is this Marantz 2270. It's a vintage amplifier that I purchased for $2,000. The owner said it runs great, but does it? The first thing I would like to do is run the scope and send a sine wave and see if my setup is correctly, if everything is connected properly. And also we can test the levels. Right away we can see that the two channels volume level is not the same and they are slightly out of phase. So we're going to increase uh, the balance so the left equal the right. That's just so we can do some more testing, but we know already that that's not good. Uh, second thing we're going to do is send a square wave and see how does that look. And again, one more time, we can see that the uh, red uh, right channel is kind of okay. Uh, not perfect, but at least it's not as bad as the left channel is completely out of whack and the square wave does not look like anything like square. And uh, next we are going to go into the frequency response uh, tab and we're going to generate a frequency response graph. 
Usually it takes a little bit of time, the low frequencies tend to generate quite slow and then it picks up faster and faster as the frequency go up. So you can see that the two channels are not at the same level and then one of them, uh, the blue one, takes a big dive down after the uh, 1k mark and that's not a good sign. Uh, the red one is a little bit better, uh, it's much better actually, but uh, still not that great. And then next thing we're going to do is we're going to see uh, frequency versus uh, distortion. And we're going to run that graph. And here you got three different sections. The graph is on top and you've got the spectrum analyzer and also you could see the sine waves on the other one. And uh, so far they're kind of tracking okay. But if you look at the sine wave in the bottom right, you can see that the one channel, the blue one, is actually not tracking the same like the red one. Distortion versus power. And here we go, we're gonna press uh, run again. And uh, the two channels are behaving differently. The uh, blue channel did not start till a little bit late. And this graph usually um, tells us how much, uh, how powerful is the amplifier, how many watts it can produce. So at some point, the distortion is going to go uh, high, like way high, and starts to clip. And this is when you can tell that's the maximum that this amplifier is going to generate. So, so far so good. We're still into the low power consumption and it's going to start to creep uh, higher here. And here it goes. It spiked. And uh, when we put the cursor around the 1% distortion, we can see that this amp will generate around 50 amps. So a little bit below the 70 amps that's rated for. So we're going to check this Sansui 4900 series that I've had uh, for a long time. I bought it like uh, 15 years ago for $5. This is when everybody was just throwing those things away. So here we go, we start with the scope. The sine waves both left and right channels are exactly the same and perfectly in phase. Remember the other one they're slightly shifted, not here. So this is a perfect example of a nicely leveled two channels. And then when we uh, switch to the uh, square wave, you can see that the two square waves are also perfect. That's a really nice and amazing square wave. It looks just square. Then we switch to the frequency response and it starts a bit sluggish on the left channel, but it recovers and stays reasonably in the low distortions level. So that's not so bad. And then we go to the uh, frequency versus distortion and uh, see how that tracks. And uh, so far they're tracking reasonably well and the distortion is staying reasonably in the low 0.2%. So also that's not too bad. And then when we go to the uh, power versus uh, distortion, so distortion versus power, it starts uh, pretty good reasonably. Uh, starts a little bit above 1% but then recovers fairly quickly. And then there was something in the middle there that uh, spiked to 1%. There is not that perfect perfect and then uh, did some dive and then majorly spiked. And the power of this amp is around 30 watts, so that's about right. Now let's check in this Macintosh 275 and see if all the hype about it is good. Uh, so let's put it to the test. So first thing with the scope and uh, again we have two perfect sine waves exactly on top of each other, same level. The square wave is absolutely just perfect. Can't get any better than that. Next we're going to run the frequency response plot and see how that The two levels stayed exactly together and it's flat as it can be. This is a perfect, perfect example of a frequency response. Next we're going to look at the uh, frequency versus distortion and uh, see how that looks. That's also uh, tracking really well, both staying really low in the, the distortions level around 
2%, not even 0.1. And then it spikes a little bit toward the end, but stays quite low below the white the 1%. Remember, with the tube amplifiers, you want that distortion, and that's what makes the uh, tube amplifier sounds good. But you don't want it to go past the 1% mark. Next, we're going to check the uh, distortion versus power and see how this amplifier is rated, uh, how much power we're going to get of this amplifier before it starts clipping and the distortion starts to shoot up. Uh, this amplifier is rated at 75 watts, which is very big for a tube amplifier. So let's see if it lives up to its expectations. So we're expecting here about 75 watts per channel on this amplifier and we want that distortion to stay below the 1% level. So far it's staying in the 0.2% even though the graph is not perfect. Sometimes the, uh, the analyzer just clicks and goes into a different bracket. Uh, but so far it's still staying low and uh, towards the end you're going to see the distortion shoots right up. This is when it's going to clip and this is where we're going to tell how much power this amplifier can do. So here it is, it's about to go up and here it goes and it spikes. And uh, if we uh, put the cursor around the 1% mark, we see around 82, 82, 85 watts actually, around the 2% uh, mark. So it can easily, so it exceeds actually its expectations and it's producing around 10 watts more than, than, than or at least 5. On 1% it was about 82. So it's at least producing 5 to 7 uh, watts more than it is rated for. So this is an excellent example of an... So now you can see why this amplifier is so very well rated and very well loved. You can use the uh, BNC adapter board that they gave you like uh, for some amplifiers, but it does not work for all amplifiers. You can get yourself in trouble. So I do not suggest you use the BNC connectors for that. So reason is the two channel inputs, their grounds are connected together. So I was using the BNC connector. I was trying to repair this old uh, tube uh, amplifier. And when I was uh, running the frequency uh, analysis response, I kept getting this bizarre response. It just kept diving down. You can see it here go down. I was thinking, what's going on? It took me hours trying to figure out what's going on. And I finally clued in. The audio analyzer suite was made for differential inputs. And uh, basically the input ground should not be connected together. And that's why the analyzer suite doesn't like it when the inputs are ground are connected together and even more that the input and outputs are also connected together. So this setup is great if you're using the waveform and you're doing different other things and different tests but not for the audio analyzer suite. And it took me a little bit of time to actually figure out another thing is that the while when you hold the board outside of the box the input outputs ground are not connected once you plug in the board into the box, guess what? Those two become connected. Basically all four grounds, input and outputs are connected. And some amplifiers don't like that and that could cause trouble. And when you try to use an amplifier that uh, does not have their grounds connected like this one doesn't have their grounds connected and while you're testing them they get connected now you can damage your uh, amplifier so uh, i tried it and there was bad things happening i'm lucky i didn't fry it so do not use uh, the bnc connector and the uh, fellow that created the audio analyzer suite software specifically talks about that and he does not recommend using the bnc board and i understand why uh, so i suggest you uh, uh, make your own board. It's pretty simple really if uh, you're doing a testing and stuff obviously you can solder a couple of things together and uh, what you need is a, a little board. You can get those boards they come in a big box like that. You can get a whole bunch of them. I'll put a link of that in the description below. You can get yourself a GPIO uh, 
90 degree GPIO connector. It's kind of like, like this one here. And, uh, and that goes basically right here. So this is the GPIO on a 90 degree angle. So you want that to go in here. And then you need two RCA jacks and two BNC uh, connectors. Uh, follow the schematics by the uh, Stuff Made uh, YouTube. His YouTube video has a PDF link for the schematics. I chose not to do the attenuation for now. The setup, it's fairly simple. You've got your audio output uh, left and right here. And these are gonna go into uh, the amplifier. So this is your line input basically of your amplifier. And then on the output level, so you're gonna put a resistor, uh, 100 ohms on each. Uh, in this case, what I'm doing because my amplifier is already at 75. So uh, I need to go a little bit high. Now bear in mind, these are small and they're not rated for a long period of time, but for short testing periods, they'll be okay. So you run one resistor on each basically channel, kind of like speakers, and you're gonna run your uh, probe clips on your negative and positive same as you see here and uh, when you get uh, back to the board here and then these will go in into channel one and two and uh, usually put channel one as a red which is right channel two as left so the reason it's nice to identify in case you have a problem with one of your channels then you can tell which one you need to fix whether you need to fix the left or the right and that helps a little bit there uh, this is my board the way i finished it all uh, it's got a couple little standoffs on the bombs when you push down it doesn't torque on it and also there's a couple standoffs on the on the back here these are really important so when you push on the board up it doesn't put a lot of pressure on the on the uh, GPI open so but the BNC board is a very important board to use with the uh, waveform software only with the audio analyzer suite you don't need it I hope I was able to show you how to use this uh, analog discovery version 3 and how to use it in an audio environment with various software and you're going to find that it's going to be valuable. For me, I'm going to be using it quite a bit, especially diagnosing some of my vintage amplifier problems. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It will really help the channel. If you haven't joined us, I would love to have you aboard and please consider subscribing. And I'm going to be making some other videos using these tools. Uh, don't leave yet. After this, there will be a portion and just about the unboxing and some various parts about the kit and what's in it and stuff like that. So if you are interested in that, keep watching. And towards the end of the video, I'll put a couple links of other videos that you may like. Take care and hope to see you again. And uh, I just received a package from uh, FedEx actually with two nice green boxes. Uh, this is a uh, I've been trying to up my game a little bit in the testing uh, department, so uh, I got uh, from uh, Digilant, uh, it's a very nice company, I uh, got the Analog Discovery 3 actually kit, this is the latest one, comes with some test probes, this is the card that goes into the, uh, the testing unit. And some mini grabber test clips here. And this is basically the box with the uh, main unit. So we're gonna. So, so this is the. This is a nice green, beautiful box here. This is the uh, BNC adapter kit. So plugs into the main unit. You also some mini grabber tools uh, and they also give you those plug-in wires. You want to mention that Digilent um, sells uh, uh, a little board called Audio Adapter and uh, I was under the impression that's going to help me connect input and output. It is very helpful if you're using the waveform software which I'll get to it as well. Uh, but when you are using the audio analyzer suite, that software does not take advantage of this board. So it does not really help you too much. It just does not output uh, into the output. There's some circuitry in here and I'm not sure exactly what they do, but 
yeah, uh, you can use this with the waveform software. It's really good, but uh, you don't, you cannot use it with the audio analyzer software. As far as I know, can, someone can correct me. I uh, would love to hear from him. Just found my cat in a bag that I left from various uh, component parts. So usually he makes an appearance somehow in my videos. Anyway, take care and uh, we'll see you again.